A new study shows that cancer risk with vaping is less than 1% of the risk of smoking. So Tobacco Control just recently published a study showing that the risk of cancer with vaping is less than 1% of the risk with smoking. Their study also shows that the risk is just slightly higher than the risks of nicotine replacement therapy products. The research team modeled cancer potency based on data that has already been published on the chemical analysis of emissions and associated inhalation risks with both smoke and e-cigarette vapor. They then calculated lifetime cancer risks using estimates for typical daily use of these products. The researchers point out that nicotine itself is not cancerous, but that vaporized nicotine products can transfer known carcinogens in the aerosol. To determine the level of harm in vapor products, they looked at biomarkers in bodily fluids, in vivo, or in a living organism, and in vitro, in a test tube, in uh, toxicology studies. The studies that they reviewed were tests done on cigarette smoke, heat not burn products, and electronic cigarettes. They found that the risk goes up when vaping at high voltages because more carbonyls and aldehydes are produced, but under normal conditions, the risk is very low. The researchers mentioned that the likely cause for increased risk is primarily due to dry burning the coils, and not only due to vaping at high temperatures. Further on in the study, they also clarify that when vaping at fixed or recommended voltages, risks of carbonyl exposure are relatively low. They also suggested that propylene glycol versus vegetable glycerin balance, other additives or ingredients in e-liquid, and puff count or puff duration can influence the production of aldehydes, but that all of these factors are dominated by overheating the coils. They talked a little bit about metal toxins too, saying that they could potentially play a major role in risk values. Uh, because the, the coils are often made with nichrome or canthal, and the atomizers and cartridges often contain metal, there is a possibility of corrosion there. The researchers stated that there is at least some evidence showing that corrosion can happen in pre-filled devices over time. There isn't enough data on the study of metals and vapor products to come to a conclusion yet, but they do recommend tests be done to learn if, if there is a cancer risk. And they also tested heat not burn products and found that they also have less risk than cigarettes, but have approximately 10% higher cancer potencies than electronic cigarettes. Relative to smoking, this is still a fairly low risk. The final conclusions that you can take away from this study is that one, carcinogens from e-cigarettes are avoidable, just avoid dry hits. Two, vaping does have carcinogens, but this depends on how the device is used. Basically, don't vape so high that you burn your wick. Three, vaping has 1% the cancer risk of smoking. Four, any research that indicates higher cancer risk in e-cigarettes is in the minority. The majority of research, which is a very important distinction to make, shows that vaping has much less risk. Five, there may be metal toxins that build up over time, though it's not proven yet. And six, and most importantly, vaping is orders of magnitude safer than smoking.